stop gaslighting post-abortive women and men. Hey everyone, I'm Kristen Hawkins. Welcome to this How to Win This Week episode on the Explicitly Pro-Life podcast. Uh, As you know, on these shorter episodes, I I really wanna give you some facts for how you can win, whether it's in a conversation or how you can engage in your community or further in the pro-life movement. Um, This is one we need to talk about when you're having conversations um, that that are coming up right now in this post-Roe era. I'm so happy to say that. Um, But we're we're seeing a lot of like news coverage about how post-abortive women and men don't regret abortion. They're never sad about having their abortions. Let's be very clear. And I have met, and if you've ever served in the pro-life movement for longer than like two hours, uh, you've probably really have met women and men who speak openly and about their regret, about their regret in, in an involvement in abortion, whether they had an abortion, drove their girlfriend to have abortion, pay for abortion. There is no amount of media coverage and abortion industry funded media coverage that can change this fact. But there is a concerted effort going on and there's a narrative that they're trying to develop. Um, this narrative has already been debunked by millions of men and women who have spoken on the contrary. The women who bravely hold their I regret abortion signs at the March for Life and at the Supreme Court who come to campuses with us. Um, but this doesn't stop the abortion industry. I mean, this is an industry that literally preys off of people despair and their crisis. So like, why would we be, I guess, I, I guess I shouldn't be shocked that the abortion industry is gaslighting post-abortive women, but I, I am, but I shouldn't because this is, these are people who like kill babies for a living, but all right, let, I want to go through though, some of this that we're hearing. So you heard me use the word gaslighting. Gaslighting is exactly what's happening. It's a manipulation saying, you know, if you regret your abortion, you're a weirdo, you're an anomaly, you're, you're something that's not of the norm, that, that doesn't happen, just stop talking about it. That wasn't really what happened to you. That is in fact the definition of gaslighting. And one of the studies that the abortion industry is using to claim this is something called the Turnaway Study. Well, the first thing you have to know is who funded the Turnaway Study. That was the Bixby Center, UCSF, University of California, San Francisco. They are literally the abortion training ground in America. So they have like endowed chairs. They're getting in different medical schools. Um, Dr. Daniel Grossman, who is like the leading abortion fangirl in America. Uh, he's there. I mean, they're developing like this new pill. So chemical abortion won't be two pills, only one pill. So then it can't be reversed. Like he's, le- this guy is like a dangerous, deadly re- man. Um, and he's quoted all the time in, in research. So this is where that turnaway study came from. So just FYI. Um, it initially wasn't even um, published in a peer reviewed uh, or journal. But I do want to kind of go through some of the the facts with the turnaway study because you will hear this re- this repeated all the time. Um, one, it was a biased sample um, study sample. So they thousands of women who had abortions were invited to participate in this turnaway study. Only twenty seven. Only 27% consented to being interviewed about their abortions. And this was a multi-year study. I think it was five years. By the final year, participation dropped to 17%. The low participation rate and then the high dropout rate means that it is impossible to claim that the research represents a majority of women who have abortions. And in fact, our good friend, Dr. Michael New, a researcher at Catholic University of America. He's like the pro-lifer researcher. We've had him on the podcast before. He's spoken openly about how, you know, when you think about 27% starting, only 17% completing, it's most likely that that 10%, those who who dropped off uh, were probably the ones who are most likely to regret their abortion. There was no true control group in this study. Um, Initially, the study claimed that it was unique because it compared the emotional state of women who had abortions to women who were turned away by abortion facilities for being too far along. Um, Except a fourth of the women used in the study's control group had abortions elsewhere prior to the study being completed or said that they suffered a miscarriage while pregnant. This messes up all the controls. Anybody who's ever done like elementary statistics, uh, this messes it all up. Like there is no actual control group in the study. 
The study also asked misleading questions of the women who had an abortion or, or attempted to get an abortion or turned away from getting an abortion. They had a conclusion that 90, the, the big thing you hear report, reported was that 95% of women did not regret their abortion five years after the procedure. But that stat comes from one question. Women were merely asked if the abortion was, quote, right for them. And the only answer you could choose was yes, no, or uncertain. The question did not allow the authors to assess if any of the women's attitudes towards their abortion had shifted, and no effort appeared to have been made to evaluate the reliability of the question. There was much better ways to ask that question. Um, on the other hand, data and evidence of abortion regret are already widely available and reported everywhere across our world. And in fact, one of the biggest underreported realities is how the trauma of abortion leads to depression and suicide. A 2000 study prepared by Dr. Brenda Major, a professor of psychology and communication at University of California, recorded that approximately 21% of women who receive an abortion believe that their abortion did more harm than good. The percentage then grew to 28% within two years of the abortion. This means if there was 1 million women who had abortions each year in the United States, 280,000 of them would believe after two years that their abortion did more harm than good. Another 2009 study by Sang and colleagues found that 20% of women from eight Midwestern U.S. clinics suffered post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. When women were asked to identify the single worst trauma they'd ever experienced in their life, considering five types of possible traumatic events, they identify past abuse and reproductive trauma as the two worst traumas. And the list goes on. You can go to pubmed.gov. You can Google this. There are study, peer-reviewed studies out there after study that prove that women suffer and men suffer after undergoing an abortion. The message to the media that we need to be very loud and clear on right now is stop gaslighting women and their, in the words of the liberals, lived experiences. Our message to women, our message to anyone who's ever been involved in abortion should be very clear because there is hope and healing and forgiveness available to you. And there are many organizations like Support After Abortion who are ready to stand with you and help you here heal from this trauma, help you heal from what's happened in your life and how the predatory abortion industry was there profiting off of your despair.